Breaking news this morning, a Springfield police officer has been shot. This happened about 1.30 in the morning. A male shooter is on the run. Now, the word we got was that this was a pretty routine call to start out with. It was a check person call, started about 1.30 in the morning. Shayla Patrick is live now to give us the latest on the scene. The search for the suspect in that shooting has expanded uh, to the parking lots of the adjacent businesses. There are at least a couple dozen officer cars here. The Springfield police, along with the Highway Patrol helicopter, searching the air, Green County Sheriff's Office. And just a few minutes ago, we saw the SWAT team actually come through in an armored vehicle and then on foot with dogs. But there's definitely still a police presence. Uh, you can see as we're looking down Delaware Street, uh, this is looking to the north uh, to or toward where Shayla is standing right now. And you can see uh, Greene County Sheriff's deputy's car right there, Springfield City Police car about one block up. So still a lot of police presence. And uh, you can maybe see the helicopter in the sky. That is the Missouri State Highway Patrol chopper looking on the ground for the shooter this morning. Of course, all of this went down around 1.30 this morning, came in as a check well-being call. We know the officer uh, was shot by a man on the street. Uh, no word on what led up to that shooting yet, but we know that the, he was taken to Mercy Hospital. The officer is said to be in stable condition, but with very serious injuries. New developments in that search for a man who shot a Springfield police officer. Let's get right to Shayla Patrick with the situation, and we're hearing that someone is now in custody, Shayla. Happening now, that search has moved actually east behind an auto by rent business. You can see members of that police special response team have now heavily moved to this area. They've blocked it off with crime scene tape. And earlier, uh, they're really focusing on an area where there are a lot of cars behind an auto by rent business. Again, that's at Chestnut and Glenstone behind the Panda Express. Uh, I heard screaming earlier and around 8 a.m. is when they actually moved to this area. Uh, I'm not sure if police have made contact with the man because as you can see we've got this vantage point and they kept us far back but right now this is where they've moved the search for that man police have made an arrest it's in an area they've been searching for hours after the shooting of a Springfield police officer early this morning at this point we're waiting to find out if the man under arrest is the person suspected of shooting that officer around 1 30 this morning let's get to Shayla Patrick at Chestnut and Glenstone Shayla that's right, Paul. A male suspect is in custody. He was captured just a few minutes ago right here behind the rent-to-own auto place on Chestnut Expressway. Uh, that suspect was located, loaded into a police van, and that police van has since cleared out the area. Uh, a couple uh, cars have cleared out the area, but it was quite the scene earlier this morning. We saw about a dozen or so officers, members of the special response team, move into that car lot you can see behind rent-to-own auto. Uh, they entered with dogs. We heard screaming, and then shortly after that, a male was brought into custody. So right now, no word on if that man is indeed who shot that officer early this morning, but we're hoping to find more details. Breaking news. Good day from KY3 News. A Springfield police officer was shot on the head near Evangel University early this morning. That set off a massive manhunt, now well past its 11th hour. ky 3 Shayla Patrick is on the scene and starts our team coverage now. That's right, Steve. A male person of interest is in custody. He was located at this rent-to-own autos lot you can see behind me. There are a few police officers and detectives on scene. They've also got the area roped off with tape, and we got exclusive KY3 video of that arrest. We'll play it for you now as you you can see in the video about a dozen or so officers and special response team members went into that lot, located a man, and shortly after took him out in handcuffs into a police van. It happened around 8 a.m., so several witnesses saw it go down, and here's what they had to say about the startling ordeal. They were in the back of that and climbed a fence, the fence an area where a bunch of cars are. So then we went around the back of the, of the parking lot that we're in, and uh, they... They actually were then going car to car. It looked like kind of a SWAT team. And they got in one of the cars and pulled some guy out. And it's time. The Springfield Police Department is rallying around one of its own. This is the first officer shot in the line of duty in 17 years in this city. See, the Springfield Police Chief Paul Williams is calling this a tragic incident. He says his goal right now at noontime is to try to protect the privacy of that injured officer as well as his family. But we are learning a little bit more about that officer that we can share with you right now. We can tell you he was shot. His condition at last check was listed as serious but stable. We do not have 
have any details on exactly what that means, but we do know his family has been contacted. We're told the family is there with him at Mercy. You can also see the squad cars that gathered around Mercy Hospital earlier today in support of their fellow officer. Now, the officer, we can tell you who, who was shot. We do not know how many times he was shot. We don't yet know where he was shot. We also don't know if he was able to fire back if there was any type of exchange with the suspect. Now, the Springfield Police Department is saying that they're getting a lot of support from the community. If you want to support them, you can do that by simply sending a message on Facebook, Twitter, some form of social media. We have the very latest information and team coverage of the shooting beginning with our 5 o'clock co-anchor, Emily Wood. Ethan, this is a difficult and in many ways devastating day, not only for the Springfield Police Department, but also, of course, for the family of Aaron Pearson. The 30-year-old officer is a married father of two young children, and he is someone the Springfield Police Des Department describes as being both dedicated and accomplished. That information coming from the Chief of Police just moments ago. We do want to show you this video that we have of COPS. It's a reality show that was filmed here in Springfield last year. The camera crews followed Officer Aaron Pearson and another officer as they worked the overnight beat. Pearson recently wrote, wrote about why he became an officer, saying he wanted to follow in his father's footsteps, who worked as a sheriff's deputy in the KC area for many years. His father-in-law is also a retired sergeant with the Springfield Police Department. Pearson said he loves going to work every day, considers it a challenge, and that's something that did not go unnoticed by his fellow officers. It affects me just like it affects every one of these uh, officers here. You know, Major Manlove, Major McCullough, the other 300 officers out here, it affects each of us personally. I think as the leader of the organization, it, uh, it certainly affects me. Um, you know, it's like one of my kids, to be honest with you. I, uh, and uh, think of that if it's in your family and something happened to a member of your family, how you would feel. Uh, that's pretty much how I feel. The suspect now arrested and behind bars tonight named as 32-year-old Joshua Haygood. Haygood is someone well known to authorities and in fact the police chief of Springfield tells us that Haygood was on parole for assault of a law enforcement officer over in Lawrence County when they encountered him last night. KY3's Linda Russell is live for us right now with that part of the story. Linda. Officers have been here on the scene at Chestnut and Glenstone for more than 15 hours now, and you can still see them behind me. It was over here uh, west of the intersection that Chestnut has been shut down all day long. The shooting actually happened on the south edge of the O'Reilly Auto parking lot, somewhere in that area where that shooting happened about 1.30 this morning. And to the east of the intersection is where officers found their suspect around 8.30 this morning. 32-year-old Joshua Haygood was found hiding in a fenced car lot behind rent-to-own autos. He was taken in for questioning at that time, but he has since been named a suspect, and Police Chief Paul Williams says he is the focus of their investigation. Officer Aaron Pearson was shot around 1.30 this morning, and police say just before that shooting, patrol officers had noticed suspicious activity in the area and began to question several subjects. That's when a man pulled a gun and shot Pearson. Even after Haygood's arrest this morning, officers remained in the area, even recruiting the help of, of the crews to help them check the sanitary sewer and a ladder truck was on the scene for a time um, to give an above the, the ground view of some storage containers. Now businesses in the area have remained on alert during this manhunt all day. At 417 DIY, only about a block from the scene, owner Steve Parsick checks, checked his overnight surveillance video and saw police in the area just before the time of the shooting and then flashing lights rushing to the scene when the officer was shot. Generally, if somebody's crazy enough to shoot a cop, they're crazy enough to shoot anybody. It's, uh, you know, it, it takes a lot to shoot an armed person, either a lot of drugs or a lot of insanity, one or the other. I was very concerned because there's so many places to hide here in our building, and then the MFA property next door is a large uh, metal building. And police continue to have areas both to the northeast and northwest of the intersection shut down and roped off with police tape at this time. Fisk Limousine was actually unable to operate for a while this morning because traffic way was shut down. But right now, just a part of Chestnut Expressway closed down as police remain on the scene, continuing their investigation here. Emily, back to you.
Thanks, Linda. And all of this, of course, happening very close to a major university right here in Springfield, Evangel University, very close to that intersection. All the students and staff there, of course, getting emails and text alerts as this was happening, telling them to be aware of their surroundings as this manhunt continued. The school, though, interestingly, was never put on lockdown. We asked about that and we're told that that's because this was happening a couple blocks away from the dorms and classrooms, but the campus was never considered part of the actual search area. Now, students and commuters, though, of course, steering clear of Chestnut and Glenstone. It's weird to think that there could be a dangerous criminal um, right next to where I go to school. There was no need for a lockdown. If the police had told us that the suspect had come this way, then you do a lockdown. Since they said he went the other way, we're not in the zone, but we wanted notification to let students know. 30-year-old officer Aaron Pearson remains in serious condition tonight. His family has asked that the police department not release any further details regarding his condition or what's expected in terms of his possible recovery. If we get more information on him, we will share it with you. Again, the suspect behind bars, the police chief saying that puts his mind at ease. Joshua Haygood, 32, was out on parole for assault of another officer in Lawrence County at the time of this incident last night according to police. For now, we are reporting live from the Public Safety Center. I'm Emily Wood, KY3 News. Breaking news. I'm certain enough that he's the focus of our investigation. We are not actively seeking any other suspects. And here's the takedown of that parole violator just out of prison, back in jail tonight while Springfield police pray for one of their own. Good evening, I'm Steve Grant. I'm Lisa Rose. Officer Aaron Pearson was shot and seriously wounded overnight, questioning a man lingering behind a Springfield business. Police have now identified that man as Joshua Haygood, the sole focus of their investigation. KY3 Assembly Wood begins our team coverage at the Public Safety Center tonight. Emily? Steve, Lisa, this is a very difficult day, not only for the Springfield Police Department, but also, of course, for the family of Officer Aaron Pearson, at just 30 years old. The Springfield Police Chief tells us he is a father of two young children, his family in the hospital by his side today. The chief describing him as dedicated and accomplished, saying that in his three years with the department, he's already accomplished some major bust for them and launched open some big investigations. We have video from just a year or so ago when the reality show Cops was filming here in Springfield while they went along with Aaron Pearson and another officer. Pearson recently wrote about why he became a police officer, saying he wanted to follow in his father's footsteps, who worked as a sheriff's deputy in the Kansas City area for many years. His father-in-law is also a retired sergeant with the Springfield Police Department. Pearson said he loves the challenge of his job and going to work every day, and that is something that we can tell you did not go unnoticed by his fellow officers. A dedicated law enforcement officer, uh, just a really good street officer who enjoyed uh, working the graveyard shift and uh, keeping you all safe while you're sleeping. A small army of police, deputies, and highway patrolmen quickly converged on the scene of the shooting. And a manhunt for other possible suspects ensued both up and down both sides of Chestnut Expressway. Linda Russell picks up the story from there tonight. Linda? Well, officers have been on the scene here at Chestnut and Glenstone for more than 16 hours now. And Chestnut Expressway to the west of the intersection remains shut down as it has all day. The shooting happened near the intersection here uh, towards the south edge of the O'Reilly Auto Parts lot is what we're told. And the suspect was actually arrested to the east of this intersection over at the Rent-to-Own Auto store about 8.30 this morning. 32-year-old Joshua Haygood was found hiding in a fenced car lot behind Rent to own autos. He was taken in for questioning at that time, but has since been named a suspect. And police chief Paul Williams says he is the focus of their investigation. Officer Aaron Pearson was shot around 1.30 this morning. And police say just before the shooting, patrol officers had noticed suspicious activity in the area and began to question several subjects. That's when a man pulled a gun and shot Pearson. Even after Haygood's arrest this morning, officers remained in this area, even recruiting crews to help them check the sanitary sewer. And a ladder truck was even on the scene for a time, providing a view from above for some storage containers. The businesses in the area remained on alert today as it was not clear whether or not the shooter had been caught. 
At 417 DIY to the west of the scene, owner Steve Parsett could see the overnight police activity on his surveillance video, but he didn't see the suspect. Businesses to the southeast, like Fisk Limousines, were crippled by shutdown streets this morning and then remained on alert as police targeted that area. The man now named a suspect was arrested just northeast of the intersection, and the owner of one of the food trucks in that area witnessed it. They actually were then going car to car. It looked like kind of a SWAT team. And they got in one of the cars and pulled some guy out. And they had him there, you know, kind of on the back of the car, and he was making noise. And then they took him to the front where we couldn't see him anymore. They haven't said that, so I've been keeping the doors locked just uh, as a precaution. And now, as Police Chief Paul Williams says, they are not actively seeking any other suspects in this shooting. Folks in this area likely breathing a little easier. Police activity seems to be focused here to the northwest and northeast of the intersection as they continue the shooting investigation. Live in Springfield, Linda Russell, KY3 News. And nearby, Evangel University took immediate steps, alerting students and staff there that an officer had been shot a couple of blocks from campus. The email and text alert went out around 7 a.m. from school security. No lockdown, though ordered on campus since it was outside the search area. Police and highway patrolmen steered the students and thousands of commuters clear of Chestnut Expressway. So I took division uh, all the way over to kind of avoid that, but it was really scary to think that somebody, that there was a shooting and um, that I couldn't get to my 